Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at the test for reducing sugars, non-reducing sugars and starch. And then we're going to be looking at what reducing sugars are, what non-reducing sugars are and how you can turn non-reducing sugars into reducing sugars. We can use the Bendix test to test for reducing sugars. Reducing sugars are all monosaccharides and some, but not all, disaccharides. The name reducing comes from the fact that reducing sugars can reduce something else in a reduction reaction. This is a little bit of a concept with chemistry. If we think back to our oil rig, we don't need to worry about the oil, but reduction is a gain of electrons. A reducing sugar can give electrons away. So in this test, in this reaction, the sugars can give electrons away to the Bendix reagent, thus changing the colour of it. Here I'm going to show you the reaction in the lab. We have our Benedict reagent, solution A and solution B. We need to mix a little bit of this. Now, two centimetres cubed is a sensible amount, but if you have a pipette full, just a big squirt of the pipette, and the two solutions need to be mixed together. You can see it has the brilliant blue colour there, and that comes from the copper sulphate. We need to add our Benedict solution to our sugar solution. Equal volumes of sugar solution and Benedict solution. Once they are mixed together, we can heat them. Now, this does take quite a long time to heat. It does need to be quite a vigorous heat and you need to be able to do this safely in a lab. But already, you can see the colour change going on there as it goes from blue through green, yellow and then to a dark kind of brick red colour. And this colour, this brick red colour, is a positive result for reducing sugars. The blue colour in Benedict's reagent comes from copper 2 sulphate. The copper 2 plus ions will gain electrons and be reduced to copper 1 ions. We will end up with a brick red precipitate of copper 1 ions and this is our positive result for a reducing sugar in the Benedict's test going from blue to brick red cloudy with a precipitate. You saw in the reaction in the test tube that it actually didn't just snap change colour straight away. There were a range of colours that it went through, starting over with blue all the way through to the brick red. And the colours of the result change with the concentration of the reducing sugars. Blue, no colour change, is a negative result and our positive result is all the way over at brick red but everything in between is also a positive result. If we have a low concentration of reducing sugars then we are just going to get a green colour or a yellow colour moving all the way through to orange and red with our high concentration of reducing sugars. Looking at the colours like this and deciding the result purely based on colours is a qualitative test. We can say yes or no, yes this is positive, but we cannot actually give a value to this. There will be a quantitative test. If you wanted to carry out a quantitative test for reducing sugars, then we can do that using a colorimeter and we can put our solution into cuvettes. A colorimeter will pass light through a sample and then measure the percentage transmission of light through the solution. Once we have that percentage transmission, how much light of a certain wavelength is actually allowed to get through, then we can compare that result to our reference sample, our calibration curve, a graph that maybe you made earlier or a graph that might be provided for you. 
We can take our result for percentage transmission and read it off the graph. And from that, we can work out an actual quantitative value for the concentration of glucose in the sample. Sucrose is a disaccharide and it is a non-reducing sugar. That means at the moment, sucrose will not give a positive test using the Benedict's reagents. It will stay blue. We will not see that brick red precipitate happening. If we broke the bond in the middle there, highlighted in blue, then we could break it down to monosaccharides again. To do this, it needs to be treated first with hydrochloric acid to break the glycosidic bond. And the hydrolysis reaction will break it down back into monosaccharides. That is a monosaccharide of glucose and a monosaccharide of fructose. Glucose and fructose are monosaccharides, both of which are reducing sugars. And these two reducing sugars will give a positive test with the Benedict's reagent. Starch is a polysaccharide and we can use iodine to test for the presence of starch. To our sample, we can add droplets of yellow potassium iodide, which will go blue black colour if starch is present, indicating a positive result for starch.